sometimes like you know when a, a family tree is obviously contributed like you know passed down the generation for obviously 70 odd years with obviously like you no know, different relatives like doing different things to be honest it seems like funny because when you go back into the 1950s uh, they didn't obviously have like coloured TVs or you know uh, everything was you know you were lucky to obviously have a TV in the 1950s when celebrities took off after the war and uh, to be honest it's like my actual family tree is a, a bit of an old tree if you know what I mean and to be honest it's just like you know contributed different things obviously passed down uh, for, for obviously like you know generation for about 70 years I mean, it roughly starts with my grandfather, who played for the Wigan Highfield and uh, Leyland back in the 1930s. Then after, when he obviously did sport, he had his own business uh, doing Robinson's coaches. Uh, and then later, after my father played for Lee Lancashire, Great Britain for Parramatta and Sydney, Australia, he continued the actual family business. And then I had an actual uncle that was a freelance journalist, like, you know, uh, writer for different companies, uh, working alongside them. Um, the Sun, uh, Daily Star, Daily Mirror, um, different ones, Robert Maxwell Company. You know, there was various ones that he obviously did for, for many years. And uh, to be honest, it's like, it's basically working as a team and um, helping within the team and getting them, like, you know, papers published and, and getting them out there. Like, when you're obviously um, writing about different celebrities, like, over a period of time, you know, from obviously 1950s to 2002, yeah, there, there was a lot of, like, you know, celebrities that he had to, like, interview, write, like, you know, different sort of articles and, um, you know, when they played for different like, like teams in the UK, uh, when people played for our teams, you know, in the UK, when you, you played against like other different sort of like former countries, you know, it, it took a while to obviously build up the actual rugby league from amateur rugby league to rugby league to super league. And what it is, everybody's got to be doing the same, you see. Everybody's got to be uh, training like, you know, professionally. Everybody is, is got to be, you know, teetotal and obviously like with good payment and earn fans as well, you know, so supporting like different teams. So unless like, you know, uh, all the teams are doing the same, that's when the name gets changed. That's what I was told uh, just before my father obviously passed away. And then there was like many conversations uh, between grandparents um, where my grandfather was obviously in contact with his sister um, that Barry Knowles was obviously playing for Wigan Athletic. He obviously did uh, coaching like after. He's done very well with it. But as a little girl, it's like I'm obviously like hearing, you know, different sort of like, you know, conversations. Uh, and then there's Brian Lydon that obviously like, you know, came round uh, speaking to me further. He's second cousin to Joe Lydon that played for the Wigan World Fame with the rest of them. And then he's done obviously like coaching like the rest of them. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, as, as soon as you've obviously got the rugby experience, then why not do the coaching? Because you you put your, your experience in, into the fact of, like, you know, teaching others and then obviously into, like, you know, other sports to improve that as well. I just know, um, yeah, there was obviously various conversations between a grandfather, an uncle and my father when they obviously came round as well as my actual grandparents. Um, I, I just know that... And I obviously like, you know, trained at uh, Robin Park for Wigan Harriers back in uh, 1992 and 1993. My uncle was obviously like, you know, writing about the Wigan World Fame as well as uh, the Olympics, obviously training. I even trained with people that would progress into the Commonwealth as well as like, you know, for Great Britain, you know, later on. Uh, I made like you know contributions myself around like Northwestern UK. As you can see, you know, um, on uh, very sort of like old records if he was obviously picked you know to run for different sort of leagues like northwestern uk you would most definitely be either like you know second third fourth fastest with your age group to be picked as an a and b runner you know so the actual times back then were obviously fast back then but as time goes on and a younger generation joins you see see the, the actual times obviously like go a lot quicker 
and you, you've got a lot more out there as well you know like training wise and that and it's like the, the more people like obviously put money into the sport the better you can train like seven days a week anywhere you know and if you've got the actual skill and go for it that's what I obviously say uh, but uh, after like you know when I've come out the running and then obviously had children I still did some obviously form of exercise I, I obviously like you know did 60 lengths in uh, 45 minutes like you know twice a week which is pretty fast it's still an advanced swimmer you know even though I did the 8 to 1500 meters and yet I was getting 235 for the 800 meters I was getting five minutes 30 you know, for the 1500 metres, and the actual times are quite fast, They're probably not now, because the younger generation's joined, you know, but things obviously change, um, and then, um, with obviously like modelling, it's like, uh, I was in a, a, a millennium sort of like competition, uh, it was done through an actual nightclub, at Atlantis in Bolton, millennium competition it was i came 16th out of the thing then the next thing is i'm obviously like receiving these phone calls come and have some pictures done at the all and mills in bolton so yes i obviously like you know went there had the pictures done then there was obviously like you know two sort of um you know modeling agencies i could obviously ring i went for models direct there was a, a bit of like promotional uh work and that um, but I never really obviously like you know got paid if you know what I mean because um, it was always a case of like you know build your experience anywhere you know what I mean and uh, to be honest it's like having like you know children sometimes it's like it's quite hard to obviously balance as well with the travel and everything and depending what help you get like from parents and ex-partners anywhere you know and it, it's not that though it's like in, in the actual like modeling industry you're looking for different looks anywhere so what you probably like use like in the 1960s uh, is probably very different to like 1980s and 1990s you know what I mean it's like the, there's different looks that they look for you know the, as, as time goes on you know with the actual celebrity thing uh, but yes I was a registered model for about like you know four years um, I mean, I, I wish I'd have obviously, like, you know, done more, like I say, but it depends what look they're obviously looking for and, and what type of, like, modelling you'll go for anyway, so what, what you would obviously fit the criteria, you know. But things obviously change, but, you know, you can obviously give it a try. I was lucky the fact that I obviously got picked for the Nationals, you know what I mean? It's it's like, you know, at least you got something out of it, you know. Um but this is it. I mean, people have obviously done like uh, modelling abroad. I mean, my sister's done modelling abroad. Yeah, she went to Rhodesia in South Africa and uh, she did a bit of modelling obviously back years ago. Um, unfortunately, the ex got rid of some of the actual modelling evidence, which was a bit naughty really because it's something that, you know, you want to obviously remember. You know what I mean? And uh, t to be honest, it's like, you know, she, she obviously got paid when she was in Rhodesia in South Africa and that, you know. Um, but like I say, you know, this is what this is it. You see, you, you go with the nasty ex and then they do nasty things, don't they? But that's that's just life, isn't it? You know, uh, I was lucky I didn't obviously get with an actual bad ex, you know, that obviously did that in, in some sense. But uh, yeah, it's like I've had like a couple of relationships um I've obviously like you know been out with Alistair you know for three and a half years traveled to Plymouth he played for Oral as well as like you know Plymouth um but like I say you know I was obviously engaged living with him um separated from him we both went our separate ways he got married and I obviously you know ended up with Nadine's father who was obviously motorcycle the thing is I, I don't actually go for people with a, a lot of money you see what I mean because in some respect, people do an awful lot with the actual sport, you know, like for so many years I've gone to like, you know, race meetings and so on, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's like the duration they've done, it's not just, just about obviously money that they've earned, if you know what I mean, because, you know, you've got to respect the fact that somebody is uh, completely loyal towards a sport, you know what I mean? And there's that side of it, you know? Um, but like I said, my, my uncle and my... my um, Father obviously went to different meetings up and down the country. They got obviously they got awarded a fifty year service. I've since then obviously spoke to like different sort of uh, royal cousins on the internet, and they've told me about you know shared like royal ancestors and that you know. So I've had to like you know look some information up and find out things. So I probably know 
more than my actual father as well as my grandfather. But that's by the way. But, you know, in some sense, it was it's good to do the actual research and to know how many Lord Crawfords and so on and who they obviously married in the past. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's good to know, like, you know, basically um, what actually happens, you know, a bit more history about it. Uh, but, yeah, uh, in some sense, it's just... Um, it's not bad at all. Um, but like I say, though, is that, uh, you know, one day you, you probably like think to yourself, like when you've obviously had these like different relationships that have not worked out, yeah, you would obviously like an actual like, marriage and that. Whether you obviously end up with another celebrity, that, that remains to be seen, you know. Nobody can obviously plan that. But, you know, in some sense, but my actual advice there is that don't go mad and obviously date and tell the media straight away, because you, you look a bit of a, an absolute prat. And I mean, I, I would obviously feel an absolute prat, if you know what I mean. It's like, you know, if they said that, you know, you, you're actually dated somebody and it doesn't obviously progress and they start meeting somebody else, you look like a, a bit of a, a loser, you know what I mean? I would obviously feel a bit of a loser, of course I would. But, you know, unless something's obviously official, the fact that you've obviously moved in together, you're engaged, you're planning to get married... It is worth mentioning then, you know what I mean? But don't go mad with the media and, and say that you're obviously having like one night stands and basically, um, how can I say, uh, we're having like obviously dates and that it's not progressing after then. Because the, the, the thing is though, in some sense, it's your reputation at the end of it. And you have to look after that reputation and you don't want to give yourself a reputation or you're sleeping with a lot of people and stuff like that. You, you put people off. You know, if you want to like, you know, build a relationship, my advice uh, with obviously the celebrity field is uh, do it in private, do it on a daily basis. And, you know, if, if you obviously have like a, a few dates, keep, keep it quiet until, you know, you decide to obviously move in together. You know what I mean? Because the thing is, it's very, very hard, you see, because when you're obviously living separate and the media starts saying, oh, they've been speaking to such a body and uh, or they've the, the met so, such a body at a, an actual place, you know what I mean? And then you start, like, thinking, well, is the guy obviously serious, um and an arm and, and different things like that? You know, the bottom line is, what I would do is not run to the media straight away. Keep it private until it's obviously official and then you don't feel like a bit of a loser, yeah? Because you've put yourself out there to be a loser and it's your reputation at the end of the day. You know what I mean? That That's my advice, like, you know, with obviously being brought up with uh, different sports and obviously making contributions with, within the four to six years. You know what I mean? It's your reputation that you have to obviously protect. Yeah. So, yeah. I could go on, like, talking for England, you know. But th this is a, a bit about me anyway.